What's up, guys? Justin Brock here with the Insurance Gurus Podcast, and I am here with a special guest today. We just wrapped up the Behind the Agency July 2022 edition, and one of our guests was Nick Vanella, who is a stud producer in the Florida area. Dude's crushing apps and putting out good content, kind of documented, and we wanted to have him on the show because, you know, we like people that we know are putting up big numbers, and we want to figure out what they're doing so that we can bring you guys value uh, by dissecting their process, that kind of thing, right? So before I get started, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram if you're watching there or subscribe on YouTube or do all three because we're awesome and you're awesome and let's be awesome together. So now, Nick. Yes. You're crushing it. A little bit. You have a great, great, you know, um, air about you where you're, you're positive, you're going, you're not letting anything get in the way. I'm sure that ties into the persistence in which you attack this business. And that's probably a big uh, part of your success. It's abs- you think absolutely is, is number huge. One? Uh, I would say number one thing is helping a lot of people. It's kind of a cool thing that we're in a business where we get paid to help folks on a very complex topic that it's meant to be complex. I mean, you've seen Medicare, it's, it's complex. And when we help people, it instantly changes their life. No questions. Yep. And we can make a great income and help change our lives and the people around us. So it's, I feel very good about it because every day is a new day to help somebody and we get paid to do that. And if you do it right and you retain that person, you get paid longer. Exponentially. Yeah. Yes. It's a, uh, it's something it's, that's really cool about getting paid, uh, you know, at scale, you know, in this business is, you know, that it doesn't always seem, and we've talked about this, you're, you're out there crushing, it doesn't always seem like you're, you know, you're, you're making money hand over fist, but you're building this long-term asset. And just like you said, we can't, in this business, you can't do what's wrong for the client and make money because they'll leave the plan because it's not working. So you have to do your due diligence. It's also really cool. Something you said about, uh, it's designed to be complicated. I actually make jokes about this. I think Congress made it so complicated because they were, they wanted to keep us in business. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I literally, I sometimes look at it and I'm thinking to myself, wow, like if I was 65 years old and you handed me my, me and Medicare you know, book and handed me this big thing, I would be like, am I back to school? Like what, what is, do I have a test? Like yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. And it just, it's one of those things that your mindset from a sales side It's not a sale. We're there to help them. And normally we're the only people that have ever laid something out for them. That's understandable. They can take the information in and then make a good decision. Mm -hmm. And then we get paid for it. It's, it's, uh, it's a triple win. We win, they win. And, you know, everybody else. The is carriers happy. win. Yeah, the carriers win. And the hospitals win if we, yes. can, you know, pick the everything. Doctors right. win, and everybody gets. To yeah. Win. Well, you know what's? Yeah, <laughs> we all, we want you to win too, guys. Yeah. So listen, um, you're out. You know, you know, really, really doing great on on your own pen, personal producer. Yes. You know, at at what I would consider the top, you know, one percent level. Um, what are you doing different than the guy that's out there? struggling to, you know, get that kind of production and first back it up. Like just so people know, um, what, what kind of production are you doing? OEP, AEP now monthly and the, and the makeup of it, just so we can, you know, get that and then get into how, how you're doing that. So we just did the, the behind the agency and that's the, it was absolutely amazing. Loved it. Learned so much about what I'm not doing. That is just, it's almost like I, I have a ship that has holes in it. Is we're just we're leaking money and i would say i like to break it down per month i always have a monthly goal i want to do 50 to 60 mapds a month mm-hmm. i know i can do 10 a month or 10 a week without even thinking and then i want to push myself to hit 15. so i don't even look at it like aep oep aep started january 1 for me so anybody that i can't sell can't move can't help they go into a pile and i keep that in my awesome crm that we were just talking about that will track all that for me so the biggest thing is keeping it organized so that you as the agent don't have to wake up every morning and go, oh, what am I going to do today? Who am I going to talk to? Where do I go? It's already pre-planned. And then you make your plan and you stick to that plan no matter what. You know, if I got to talk to 10 people today, we're talking to 10 people. If I got to go see them in person, I got to call them on the phone. I got to mail them something back. 
you know, things like that. It has to be a plan. If you don't have a flight plan, your airplane will not land at the right airport. Mm -hmm. You're just flying. And if you fly without a plan, you run out of gas, what happens? You drop right down and explode. <laughs> exactly. And there's so many agents. Uh, that's why I haven't really recruited anybody yet because I've looked at why do, you know, how do I help them? How do I give them something that they don't have? And so many people I talk to are just, they're just throwing darts at a board. Or I don't want to throw darts at a board. I want to know this is my goal. This is how we're going to do it. Let's follow that plan. Yeah. And so many people don't want to, like, they just don't want to commit to that plan because, like we talked about earlier, it's a long term vision that you're not going to make money tomorrow. You make a sale, but Medicare is a building game. Yeah. You know, I'm here to build a business. And that's really the, the driver of what keeps me positive because every day builds on the next. Yeah. It's just momentum snowball rolls Absolutely. downhill. No, I, I completely agree, man. And, and when you have, you know, a long-term vision and you're, you're thinking about where you're going to land, um, you can really commit at a higher level today. Uh, it's very difficult to commit day in and day out in a way, in a big way that makes a difference if you don't know where you're headed. And I know you know where you're headed. So where, where are you headed? What's your, what's the horizon? Uh, you know, I know powering through personal production to a level of getting some stability uh, in that renewal income built up. But what's your, what's your plan right now? Well, I mean, I, I want to, first things first, I want to get to the point where I don't have to personally produce. I know we talked a little bit about that where you step out of the business. So you're not working in it, you're working on it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. I mean, my ultimate goal is I'd like to do 50,000 MAPDs in a single year. You know, yeah. not, obviously not on my own pen. I'm not super <laughs> duper as some agents. You would have some you. kind of self enrollment per yeah, wizard. Exactly. Yeah, I'm some kind of wizard. But no, I, I'd like to have that as my agency, the Aging Benefits Advisory. We we have a fifty thousand app year would be my goal. Yeah. Um, but to do that, you got to have a thousand app a year. You have yeah. to build it one step at a time. Right. And doing it as a one man show. Next year's goal was probably going to be to hit that. As I've said before, thousand on my own pen. And then I know that that will be very easy to say, all right, if I can do a thousand, I can teach somebody to do two, 300 without even thinking, yeah, this is the leads. This is how we do it. Mm -hmm. And that's normally enough for most people to build a very good life. You know, 200 yeah. apps a year, five years, you've built a good life. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a really good thing because there's so many seniors that just aren't helped. They're underserved. So we can help expand that and, yeah, and you build the team that there's way. So much enrollment happening through self enrollment in a bad way, or through call centers that aren't doing a quality job. Yes, uh, that you know a lot of people think, oh, there's so many brokers, it's competitive, but it really is still an underserved, <laughs> you know, market from from quality advisors that are going to go out and find yes. what's the best step for them. So, absolutely, and I also think too the other thing is there's there's so many agents that aren't informed properly whether it's their top line is not educating them or they, they're not taking the self steps to say, Hey, I need to know about this. I need to learn more about my craft. They just look at it like, Oh, it's a job, treat it like a job. And then, you know, it's 92% later they're gone. Yeah. It's, it's a career. This is something that you're committed to, you know, at least the next five years of your life. And then you can decide, you know, from a business standpoint, do I want to step away from my business? How do I want to run it? How many people do I want to help? Does it matter to me? There's so many avenues and positives that you can go down. I think a lot of people, they quit on it too early. Mm -hmm. you know, they get in the industry and then within a year, they're like, oh, this is no good. And now they're, yeah. you know, they're back at wherever they worked before. Yeah, and specifically if you're in Medicare, yes. um, it, <clears throat> it's easy to do that because the renewal income hasn't called up. You know, it's really like we had talked about, it's the end of two years of hard charging uh, yes. before you really hit that stride anyway. And, you know, with MA, it's even based on the calendar year concept. So it's that next calendar year, 24 months in. And when you hit that, uh, it's a whole different ball game because you start to uh, be able to provide through that, that residual income. And, you know, so many, so many people get into it. And uh, on, on the other side, maybe a, a fatter up front, like a, a life side, and they're on a different hamster wheel. They might have a higher... Uh, you know, retention rate first, second, third, fourth year. But I talked to so many of those guys on the other side and they're just like, you know, I win carrier trips and I can't even go to them because I have no residual revenue. So, you know, it's fortunate you start out Medicare. Now, um, interesting story. 
and you know, you can tell me to go to hell if you don't want to tell it, but I, how you got into Medicare was interesting. I want to, uh, you know, if you're okay with telling that story, I think it's, I think uh, it's I'll, I'll go through it. I'll, I'll mention, I won't say his last name, Yeah. Uh, but uh, someone big in our industry, I sold home improvements before I got into this. I worked at a gutter protection company and uh, I was in, I'm in Tampa. I'm in the area um, that you never know what you're going to see in Florida. I always like to tell people that. And I went out to a home, measured them up. I noticed the house was really nice. And I know if you're, you're out there, if you're selling right now, every single in-home sales rep knows you always want to look at their cars. You want to look at their, look at their cars, their watches and their wife. And you can normally have a pretty good idea of where they're at financially. As terrible as that sounds, yeah. I knew instantly when I saw this guy, I was like, all right, you're at about, you know, to sound terrible. You're all right looking fella, pretty average. Your wife's stunning. This guy's a closer. He's probably good at business. You know, he's got a great watch on, beautiful home. And I just I went through my pitch and I sold him, which you know, salespeople are normally easy to sell because yeah. they yeah. have respect for it. And they you know, yeah. he gave me objections and I overcame them. And I could tell he was kind of teeing them up, but he was also seeing like, is he going to go for it? Is he going to close? Yeah. And I went through and I closed the deal and I just asked him, I was like, man, like looking around and I'm making pretty good money at this time. You know, I'm a 150, 200 grand guy. And uh, I'm like, what do you, uh, what do you do? He's like, he's like, well, uh, I work in Medicare. I was like, oh, okay. Like, how does that work? Like, you know, he's like, I own a little call center, which now we know is kind yeah. of a joke because it's not little. It's pretty good. Yeah. And he's like, we sell over the phone, but we sell Medicare. And I was like, stuff for old people. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, man, there's, there's some money to be made there. And I was like, in my mind, I thought, yeah, right. Like, sure. And he tried to recruit me to work in a, like a call center deal. He was like, yeah, man, you come work for us like, anytime. Okay, cool. And then I later I went and I Googled his name and I found out, wow, he's at like a big company that I've seen, you know, like Fortune 5000. They're growing. And yeah. It hit me. It was like, wait a minute. There's money here. But it's something that he said. He's like, imagine if you sold something and you got paid on it forever. Well, I never, my brain at that time, you know, you, you had your, my mindset was locked. I couldn't see that, wait a second, there is another way to make money other than just sell it today. Yeah. And I started getting more into it and looking at content and YouTube and just Googling and researching. And I was like, wait a minute, there's a lot of these people. I'm in Florida, which, you know, slash God's waiting room. <laughs> They're everywhere and they need this. Yeah. And before you know it, I'm sitting for my AHIP and then I'm, you know, I'm out there learning the different plans. And of course in Florida, which is a whole different beast, anybody that sells in Florida knows that, we have a lot of Medicare options for people, whether it's supplements, MAPD, there's MSA, there's everything. Yeah. And it's a lot to take in all at once. You get hit with that wave of not knowing. And I know a lot of agents feel this where they're just like, I got to learn everything about every product. And it's like, you're not going to be able to learn all this in an hour. It's not going to happen. You need to find someone that knows what they're doing, get with your carrier reps, and, you know, learn. And I, I spent a good two months learning. And of course, those two months were October, November of my first ever sales year. And I worked my other job. So I jumped right into an AEP where I just took a massive beating because I bought Facebook leads because everybody buys Facebook leads because I needed them now. And I was working on Saturdays and it was just, it was a brutal like month. And I was like, you know what? I'll just do it part time. No big deal. Didn't make a sale, took a beating. And then I, I just kind of hit that wall where I was like, this is a real thing. This is amazing. I need to put myself in a position to be successful. So I went and I don't recommend this. So anybody listening to this is not financial advice. I quit my awesome sales job where I was making plenty of money and I went all in. I spent, you know, a couple thousand dollars on direct mail. And I said, when they come in, we are working them to the hilt. Like we are going to sell them. Yeah. And I went and I called, went to practice my calls, which I was absolutely garbage on the phone. I'd never made a cold call before a semi cold call, leaded call. Right. I'd never done that in my life. So I was like holding my phone and I'm looking at it and your phone weighs like 10,000 pounds. You're just like, <laughs> Oh, and I'm dialing it and I'm like, Hey, it's, it, it's Nick. Uh, you sent this card in. I got info. Want me to drop it off for you? Like, you know, yeah. and it was, it was awful, but again, practice a lot, got better, took beatings, got better. And right. it just was that, that, you know, I just made that decision. Like there's a wall in front of me. It's not very thick. I'm going to run through it. 
And once you did it once, it got a lot easier. I don't know if that answered your question, but that's kind of the, no, the process. Definitely. But uh, when you get into, um, you know, calling and, and, uh, and, and all that, you know, we talked about, uh, the, the, the card is almost just like permission to, or, or, or like the, you know, you're over the compliance standard if they've requested information. Um, now knowing what you know, now, do you think you can just show up to most of those houses and, you know, if they're home, you know, you'd be just as well off before calling an appointment setting? Uh, I personally think so. I mean, obviously, we got to stick to what we got to do with our rules and everything. But it's just a, I think it's a mental, excuse me, a mental block. Yeah. A lot of agents want to have a preset appointment. I don't, it's definitely more efficient to call your leads and schedule so that you at least know they're home. Yeah. But I don't really think it's necessary. And I think every agent, especially life insurance or whatever you sell, Mm-hmm. If you can't get them on the phone, some people will never answer their phone. Like they just won't. So you'd either waste that lead and that money and that permission, or you have to go hand deliver it. And I think that's a personal touch. And people like that. You know, they think they're oh, you're a no, you're a real person. You know, you're you're there. It's a much much harder for them to say no to you, tell you you're a scam, or hang up when you're standing on their doorstep. Yeah. And here I am. I'm in a, I'm in a polo. I'm a nice fellow. I'm like, hi, I'm Nick. I know their name. Well, you are 300 and, you know, yeah, I am now. pretty large. You uh, might, might scare, <laughs> scare them sometimes. You know, you wouldn't scare my mama, but you'd probably scare my mother. <laughs> I get, I do get, <laughs> I do get some people that are like, oh my God, like Lurch is at my front door. And I'm like, <laughs> Hey, like, and I bend down and like, I wave, like it's pretty, I treat them like they're 12. Until they let me in and then it's like, okay. But it's like uh, one of the things I always say in one of my door knock videos, you can see uh, I talk about it. People are kind of like, everybody has, uh, let me rephrase that. It's kind of like having a dog. Everybody's got a dog that you knock on the door, that dog's going to bark like crazy. And then once the homeowner lets you in, that dog's like your best friend. Yeah. Well, until you got in that door, that dog was ready to tear your head off. But as soon as the homeowner opened the door and said, come on in. Fido is now your best friend and follows you around like, you know, like, hey, you will pet me. Homeowners the same way. It's that it's literally like that six inches of space is the, you know, the threshold of their home. You know what they say. If you can get through, you're there. Vampires, you know. Yeah. yeah. People have to invite the vampire <laughs> yes. in for him to come in. Yes. Once he's in there, though. Yes. Pretty much his house. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, <laughs> I was going to say, um, Yes, you. If you want to look like a vampire, they have to invite We're us. We're kind of like vampires. That, of Medicare agents. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say you said that. I'm not. I'm not gonna be quoted on that. Um, <laughs> Nick Vanelli said, said it here first. Yeah, I was gonna say Medicare the va- agents the, are blood sucking vampire. The vampire. So. The vampire agent, if you will. The vampire. Agent. Um, there's no yeah. good way to make us I, go. I away. know what you mean. Like, if you can get in the house, you know, and I'm not meaning like you know, if you uh, rip off the storm door and head in. We're not breaking in. But, just to be clear, it's not a B and E. Them to take their let their guard down. And just enough to let you in to talk to them, then the guard really comes down, and it, you know it, you become a real person, not just a weird guy on their front porch. It's a very interesting concept, and uh, if you've ever been door knocked by a Mormon who's sell not a Mormon uh, selling Mormonism, if that's the thing, yes. LDS, but a Mormon selling something, yes, they're very good at it. And I've been door knocked by uh, like the Mormon selling, um, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, Pest control. Uh, I had one alarm security system. Arms, yeah. And uh, and and he he sold me. And <laughs> now, like you said, I'm a salesperson, so it was easier to sell me. Very easy. So that's one thing I will let every single salesperson know. They are sellable salespeople. I mean, if you ask the guy or the girl, whoever you're sitting in front of, if they say, "Oh yeah, I worked in sales," you're either in for a, a bumpy ride or it's going to be the easiest process you've ever seen because they already know what's happening and they've made the decision of what they want to do. They're either going to say no or they're going to say yes, but it'll be nice and clear because they normally have an understanding that they don't want to run you through the ringer or just like the gentleman that I sat with, his name was Eddie. He wanted to see if I would, you know, rebuttal, if I would stop his objection and overcome it. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, almost testing me. 
Yeah. And that's a really good and thing. It's funny because they'll tee you up for like the textbook objections. Yes. Like I got to talk to my wife and I was like, that's cool. She's right there. Come on over. Like, <laughs> and I invited her right to the table. Come on, let's talk about it. Yeah. And he, I know his, in his mind, he was like, there's no way you just did that. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's talk about how much we're about to spend. Like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? Well, we're we're about to spend. are kind of bombastic anyway. Yes. So Nick, on the, um, on, on like if people were reaching out and wanted to follow you, see what you're saying. I, I know you're doing a lot on Instagram. What, yes, and you have two. You have your personal and you have a business. Your one. business one. What's your what, what's your preferred poison for people you know, checking out? What so you, you can follow on? me on both on Instagram. It's my name, Nick Vanella, V O N E L L A, uh, or it's the the Man Sales, mm-hmm. and Man is the is the acronym for what I do. It's maneuver, adapt, negotiate. Every single sale can pretty much be broken down into that. So just like us as Medicare, especially with, with you guys here with the Medicare gurus, you position yourself as a expert in the field, particularly for agents. Like how do we help you? How do we give you value? You've positioned yourself. You've maneuvered yourself as that. Mm-hmm. You don't really have to adapt because you've already done that through all the work. You know, the agents can tell, oh, he's already adapted. And then negotiation is, you know, what does it take to be part of the team? Yeah, And that's... You guys do it flawlessly. It's just, it's the, it's the ideal funnel. Yeah. And that's the same thing that can happen in any sale, no matter what it is. And that's why I recommend if follow my channel. I do a lot of cool videos where I'm actually either out in the field or I'm sitting with someone and you'd be amazed how many people let you talk to them and film them and be like, Hey, I'm going to talk to you about this. Cause you know, they just went over that. It's like, okay, cool. And just recap it. Yeah. And then of course, all the weird stuff that happens to in-home sales people, yeah. um, yeah, there's some wild stories on there. So I always recommend, I did a video uh, recently about bug spray mm-hmm. and that every single person, if they go into a home, you should have a can of bug spray in your car and just preemptively hit yourself a little bit <laughs> just because you have no idea who you're walking yeah, into you don't. <laughs> um, and what's going to be there, whether it's, you know, fleas, bed bugs. Nobody or thinks the about other. the, uh, the, 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 like that side of it. In, when you're not in insurance, nobody thinks about that. Once you've been in insurance, you know, like everybody's got good stories. Um, even tell us those agents have some funny stories, but definitely in home, like it's nothing like that. So we actually were, when we were somewhere where everybody was telling their favorite in home story and there was a couple of tell sales only agents and they're like, I feel like I need to go to the field for a year just so I have good stories. <laughs> yeah, I got and something I like, to no, say. <laughs> if you're doing well over the phone, you just, you <laughs> skipped some burdens. <laughs> yeah, stay there. That's what, that's my next thing is actually learning how to sell over the phone Yeah, because it gives you so much more versatility, so much more reach. But it also keeps you out of the weirdest situations yeah. ever. I mean, some great people, yeah. but some definite odd ones. So, yes. well, Nick, we're definitely going to have Nick back on and probably do some training for Go Guru, Univers- Go Guru University. We'll probably uh, also yep. have him on for one of our accountability calls because he's got some great stuff going on um, and showing that, you know, basically somebody can enter uh, from the ground up and build you know, build their investment. So many people are like, oh, I got to take loans. I got to get private equity. I got to do this. But if you get into it and do like what he's doing for two years, you know, it's a grind. But then two years in, you have the money you need, the residual to be your own bank and uh, uh, not infinite banking concept or uh, participating whole life. <laughs> be your own bank with your renewals. That's yes. the better one. So, but we're definitely going to have him back on. And if you guys want to hit him up, the man sells Nick Vanella, V O N E L L A. Let me know if you're trying to look for him. He does have some awesome, you know, break down some concepts uh, that apply directly to the field. And we're happy to have him as part of uh, our team uh, with, uh, with Pete Fournier, one of my partners and me, we get to uh, get the pleasure of working with him on a lot of stuff. Um, and we're always looking for dudes like this on the team. I wish I had more of them. So no, he's going to do great things. So definitely check him out. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Oh, thank, say thank you for having me, man. It's been amazing. Uh, behind Absolutely. the agency was just just opened my eyes to everything. You heard it here. Behind yeah. the agency. It was awesome. In September. Behind the agency. Yeah, I, rec- I recommend it. Be there if you want to up your game because there's so many things I didn't know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, don't want me. Like, that's the wrong sound, too. Just that. Yeah, we'll just clap. Right, what's this? There we go. Oh, sorry. Justin <laughs> likes to play with sound effects. Yeah, so they light up, too. all right guys thank you so much for watching please subscribe please follow us and uh, we'll put out more good content for you it's time to grow your agency like a guru introducing go guru pro 
The Go High Level platform allows for minimizing software-based subscriptions and grants control over several faucets of marketing and communication. Automate your workflow, communicate with your leads, book appointments in advance, and house all your clients in one secure location. Visit goguru.pro and schedule your one-on-one demo today.